Welcome to Business Redefined. Tonight we are focusing on the state of the capital markets and we are delving into a number of issues including the listings and the listings, the state of the corporate bond markets and what about market development is happening around issues such as derivatives. And to discuss that and delve into more on that, I am joined by Mr. Wycliffe Shamia, the Chief Executive Officer. Mr. Shamia, welcome on set. Thank you. The market is at a point which uh, we haven't been in a very long time. And by that, I mean that uh, when you look at the key indices, they are at lows we last saw in the early 2000s. What's your assessment of the market? We can say the market is doing well. Um, the indices could be down, uh, or, although they are now a bit stable, uh, just comparing to where we were in March when we had the first case of COVID-19 being announced. Um, however, over time, we have gained and the market seems to be stable now. Now, I wanted just to mention that indices look at the trends in prices, but there are other indicators which to us mean so much. Uh, perhaps just looking at the activities in terms of absolute numbers. Now, you realize as the prices were going down, activities went up and uh, most likely we attributed the decreasing indices in what we see as most foreigners taking flight because of you know protecting their investments and therefore locals had actually an opportunity to now get these assets at fairly good prices so depending on how you look at it we can say 100 percent it wasn't a very good uh, more, of course, we were uh, we were where we are now. However, um, I guess it presented an opportunity, which locals have taken, uh, uh, of course, into consideration as they make their investments. And speaking about uh, activity in the market, uh, we clearly understand, and this is something which CMA regularly flags. The concentration risk in this market is quite. Uh, is something which should provoke a lot of discussion because it is heavily skewed towards the telco, by which I mean Safaricom, and the banking sectors. And um, when you look at this trend that we are seeing, what do you think can be done? Because of course there are conversations going about the government potentially divesting yes. uh, some of its businesses to try and catalyze activity. In the short term, I see the government privatizing being the most uh, viable solution for now. However, we know there are certain other corporates who are not listed who could actually be on the listing big enough again to bring in some value that people are looking for. In my view, I think investors need to be sen sensitized to realize there also value in some of the small counters which of course are listed, but sometimes you find there isn't much activity. Now, many reasons. Perhaps shares are not available in the market for those who are interested, and therefore you find activities in those counters not being really what we want to see. However, when you look at the over-concentration you spoke about, on one hand, it is an issue. And I'm happy that at least we have a derivatives market running now where people can hedge their losses just in case the worst happened. When you talk about there are companies out there which could potentially be viable for listing, let's talk about the quality of companies which are listing. And why I'm raising this issue is, uh, take for example the growth enterprise market segment rolled out in 2013. Yes, yes. If you look at the companies which are listed there, unfortunately there isn't much to write home about. What about the quality of companies listing? We are looking at our requirements so that, of course, the criteria is more uh, looking at how do we get assets which add value. Um, of course, it's good to have many companies on the listing. It's normal. Um, however, how do you get uh, values from assets which are listed is the question we need to look at. Now, if you want to look at that, you look at the quality of management in these companies, how investors put their management to task, 
to explain their plans, strategic plans. And the issue is, are we doing that? I think this is something we need to look at more. Because I believe even in assets that look weak, if certain decisions are taken in the right direction, they will improve over time. So the issue is, how do we ensure even the other assets which are listed are just as good as? To what extent do we involve institution, in institutional investors in matters around decision making, having new ideas in these companies and just ensuring their businesses do as well as they are expected as per their strategic plans. Um, but it's good always not just to look at the very strong companies because companies are just like human be beings. They will have issues today. And then, of course, those issues will go away. So it's just being optimistic um, because listing comes with intentions of, I want to raise money. So if you raise money from the public, the best thing to do is you get listed. So the issue is how do we ensure that value uh, continues to grow as you are listed on the exchange. Talking about listings, uh, Mr. Shamia, we haven't had a new listing in quite a while. In fact, some have spoken of the so-called death of the IPO yes. at the Kenyan capital markets. And uh, on the other hand, we are seeing more delistings exactly. than listings. Exactly. Does this bother you? Yes, it does. And for many people, it is an issue. Um, when we talk about listing, it is not only unique to Kenya. Actually, it's a discussion uh, many jurisdictions are having now. Now, if you look at the trends in the way people raise money, it seems to have changed a little bit because we are now even talking about alternative ways of raising capital. So we need to know as technology advances, we expect to see changes in how, uh, of course, those who require money will access the funding. Now, the issue of listing, many years, and of course, instead of listing, we are losing companies. I think for us, there are specific things we are doing. We want to look at the legal framework so that at least many companies are brought into the basket which of course, allows many companies to raise money from capital markets. Um, you will understand the current requirements are very inhibitive. They don't support some of the, of course, um, uh, intentions issuers will have. And therefore, we want to go and see how do we uh, relook at the requirements in this re requirement, in these regulations. So that even we bring in the issue of SMEs being able to raise money in the market. Thinking about private equity, some companies out here, and we speak to a number of them, will tell you, why would I go to raise money in the public sphere where there is so much disclosure needed when on the private side there is enough hand-holding to enable me to raise capital without much disclosure? Do you feel that private equity venture capital space has stolen the thunder from the exchange? That's the first question. And the second one, in the budget speech for this year, the CS indicated that there is a proposal to place private equity and VC under the ambit of the CMA. Mm -hmm. Many of us are still not sure what that means. Okay. Maybe you could explain that to us. Well, uh, very good questions because the issue of IPs, private equity funds, may be working against the normal traditional ways of raising funds. And from what we have seen, actually, if you look at what the PE funds require of these uh, companies that want to, to benefit from their funds, equally, there is a bit of disclosure to these equity funds as investors. There are specific procedures, measures that a company seeking equity funds, a private equity funds, will have to go through for them to satisfy the PE firm that of course they will be able to benefit if they invested in these companies. Now whether we can say equity funds have actually brought down 
what we see as IPOs and additional issuances in the past is really like how you look at it. Because even before, equities used to go through the listing to get some of the investments into their books. But now it's more of like they will approach certain assets where they have interest. Now, there is a balance there in terms of do I want to be a quality asset listed and therefore in a group of so many companies that high, are high quality that people can look at openly because then you find coming in, going out is very easy. Or do you go for an equity fund, you get funding, but you are restricted in some way in what you can do. Now, on the second question where you say CMA was supposed to, of course, regulate and oversight PE funds and venture capitals, yes, of course, this is in the Finance uh, Act now. And it comes from the point of how equity funds can raise capital. Sometimes they access uh, funds from the public in some form, and therefore there is need to, for there to be some kind of like accountability in the way the funds are being used and applied. So just to be sure I'm getting you right, because um, a lot of the PE capital in this market is foreign capital, to be honest. And uh, the question then becomes, what are you regulating in foreign capital? In, in a market that is predominantly foreign capital led, and then beyond that, is it a measure to try and uh, push for exits via the market, by which I mean the Nairobi Securities Exchange, Ex exactly. because potentially that could be it. Mm. No, um, by the way, I agree with you. In the past, we've seen most of the PEs come in with the foreign funds, but quite a, ma a number are also raising ma uh, funds locally. In fact, for me, it's a mix. There are those who are foreign funded mainly, and of course, if they will be mainly foreign funded, then the oversight won't be so much heavy on them. Uh, we'll be looking mainly at those who are sourcing funds locally and especially from the public. And uh, on the issue of then, is the interest to get them to list so that they can exit through the exchange? Uh, a discussion around there, that is not the intention really. The intention is just to ensure if they are raising money within the local markets, uh, those who are actually participating in the issuances are protected and of course there is order as they do that within the local market. All right. And that point by Wycliffe Shamia takes us to a short break. We'll be right back with a lot more on this conversation focusing on the capital markets. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Business Redefined. Tonight we are speaking to the Chief Executive Officer of the Capital Markets Authority, Mr. Wycliffe Shamia, unpacking a number of issues regarding the state of the capital markets. Wycliffe, welcome back on set. Thank you, thank you. And just to pick up from where we left, and uh, I want to delve into the issue of suspended companies, Mumias, um, and many others, at the River Mining, etc. The list seems to be growing. Some are organic because, for example, KQ is pursuing a renationalization. Others, it's because of management issues. Does this bother you, and what is the authority doing about this? Normally, it becomes very difficult for you as a regulator to insist on certain delistings because they come automatically out of certain processes. We've seen takeovers come, and when they are done, of course, these are business decisions. I think as regulators, we facilitate However, we ask ourselves very hard questions. As we lose companies that are listed, how do we then increase the range going forward? I think that becomes the issue that we were discussing even earlier. Because in a normal market, you expect listings and delistings, especially for good reasons like the ones we are talking about. Now, it is never very good for you to lose a company from the list. So it, it really bothers us. And specifically where a company is likely to be list, uh, delisted because of certain problems, financial, operational, or otherwise. The ones you mentioned earlier, the likes of Mumias and others. 
the corporate bond market has been an, in a seizure, so to speak, ever since we had Imperial and Chase going under, yet they had issued facilities in this market. And the question becomes, what's the future of Kenya's corporate bond market? Because granted, we have seen Akon issue uh, a debt facility, but it had to have a guarantee to attract the kind of appetite we saw. And in the event that it is resuscitated, then what sort of yields are we looking at? Because of course the risk profiling then becomes a critical question there. We are looking at if issuance were to take place, how do we ensure investors are protected? Of course you spoke about guarantees. It may not be the way we want to encourage for everybody. Maybe we need to talk about credit rating being more uh, sought for by investors. And of course, investors having actually some kind of hope and belief that some of these assets are good enough. It's not obvious that, um, of course, uh, uh, those who have issued bonds may go under. I think it's an issue we must, of course, look at very positively in most cases. What we have done is to speak to most of the institutional investors just to let them, of course, understand maybe they need to look at this very differently now because many years passed, we need to go past what has happened in the past and they need to have this illustrative kind of effect when these bonds are issued. Let's talk a little bit about market development. Of course, we've seen a rollout of a number of um, asset classes, as it were, whether it's uh, ETFs, whether it's real estate investment trusts, whether it's uh, derivatives. and my question always is on the uptake. If you look, for example, at the derivatives market, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I could be wrong, institutional investors have not played in that space yet. Does it reflect a failure on CMA and NSC, for example, in terms of courting those who should be swaying the heavy axe in this place uh, because a lot of retail activity but not really punching within the weight that was expected then gives a wrong impression on this asset class? Derivatives markets take time to take shape. They seem to be new classes of, you know, um, products in the world like where we are now. But I think what is important is what we are doing, just to look at what is causing the low appetite for this, uh, of course, products. We are in the process of looking at the market and, of course, finding out maybe from feedback what needs to be done so that there is uptake of these products. But the obvious question we have seen uh, was the contracts which are listed. Of course, you rea realize most of them are either single stocks or index. Uh, most people really looked for uh, uh, derivatives around, um, of course, liquid assets, cash and related which aren't yet on this exchange because of some, some of the pre uh, co uh, cautious, cautious steps we are taking just to ensure that you know, they are not misused to influence the way we are doing our mo monetary policy, just to ensure that we are actually on top of what is required to be done. There has been the conversation, which we did mention earlier, that potentially the government should be divesting its stake in some entities to try and ramp up the activity in the market. Two questions here. One, don't you see this uh, taking us back to the in episode where um, between 2006 and 2012 we saw a wave of new listings because, of course, the government was uh, uh, privatizing a number of entities. Then we see a decline again. And Aren't you bothered because when you look at the incidences of privatization from the state in this country, apart from Safaricom and KCB, you're talking about KQ, you're talking about Mumias, you're talking about National Bank, and uh, entities which haven't performed so well in the market. Do you feel uh, the, the, there's enough market confidence around this kind of uh, route to listing? For me, I think already the market is asking for this because, you see, we, when we discuss the issue of over-concentration in a few securities, it means we, we need to increase the range of good uh, assets that are listed. Now, whether the trend you have just mentioned will take shape, I think it is a futuristic kind of like happening, which we will want to see us and when we get there, 
However, I think for now, for now really, for us to stay as activities in the market, I think people will always see government privatization to have very positive impact on even the private sector then coming back to market and of course raising funds. How are we doing from a um, market conduct perspective in terms of just oversight and ensuring there, is, there are no incidences of insider trading, etc.? How, how are we on that front? Very robust systems in place now. Um, I will tell you many layers. Of course, uh, the CMA has its own functions around surveillance, compliance. Uh, the exchange has their own pro uh, programs also. And we work in hand in hand. And therefore, we are able to see the market as and as it happens every day during the trading hours. And we have access to a lot of information, even when the markets close. And my final question, and um, an issue which I've been asked many times, especially in this COVID environment, just for the avoidance of doubt, cautionary statements versus profit warnings, because increasingly we see cautionary statements. Yet when you look at the numbers, you're asking, should this have been a profit warning? Are they synonymous? Is there a provision which has been created to allow a window for uh, giving a cautionary without going too much into detail that it will be below 25%, etc., etc.? et cetera? We are in this circumstance where generally most companies have been affected. So it's not news. I think the issue is to what extent. So. What we prefer as regulators now is companies disclosing, yes, as you understand, we have been affected by COVID, but this is what we are doing to ensure we are mitigating the likely, of course, negative effects that have been thrown out of COVID. And that point by Wycliffe Shamia takes us to the close of our conversation on Business Redefined tonight. We've been focusing on the capital market, specifically on CMA and its oversight role. Up next is the Markets Report.